Back in 2014, you had to root your phone for simple things like enabling OTG, improvement in battery life, dose mode apps, etc. I mean, petty things. But now you get all of these natively in Android. So the question needs to be asked, is routing worth it in 2019? If yes, then how easy it is and why should you do it? So this is Pradeep from TechWiser.com and well, let's find out. Now, before you jump on to routing your Android, let's see how cool are manufacturers when it comes to routing and flashing your device. Let's start with Realme 3 Pro. It's been a month since the launch and no sight of bootloader unlock support. And this is what they replied to me on Twitter. Coming to another popular phone, Redmi Note 7 Pro. This guy made me wait 15 days just to unlock the bootloader. I mean, wow, that's like really testing your nerves. And here's my daily driver, the Honor Play. Huawei doesn't let you unlock the bootloader itself. It's a closed program which runs rarely. I mean, top secret, you know. So as you have seen, OEMs don't like you routing the phone or flashing it. And it's not only limited to Android. Here's Apple XS Max, iOS. Cydia is discontinued and Apple doesn't want you to jailbreak. I mean, what's Apple without all those restrictions? Meh. But thankfully, there are devices which let you root. We have the OnePlus, Google Pixel, Asus, good old Motorola. These phones are fairly easy when it comes to bootloader unlocking. Okay Google, thank you. So assuming that you have a phone, you want to root, so how do you root it? Well, I'm not gonna walk you through the entire process. There are tons of tutorials out there, but hang on. Here is a flowchart for better clarity. Here is your phone with stock recovery in it and the other side we have this rooted phone. Now in order to root any Android phone you need a custom recovery like TWRP. Now Android doesn't let you install a custom recovery unless you unlock the bootloader. So in simple words to root any Android phone first you unlock your bootloader and then flash a custom recovery on it. Okay assuming that you have come so far with a rooted Android device so the next thing is what do you do with a rooted Android device? Well let me show you. First thing is customization and beautification. You get substratum themes that give you system wide dark mode like this. And well, that is just one example. You have a thousand other themes. You also have the pixel experience, which pixelifies your phone, if that is a word. And yes, all those custom boot animations, OnePlus fonts, themes, meh. You don't root your phone to see jumping dots on boot or fancy fonts in the app drawer. Now I get it, customization is cool but not for everyone. So the next thing you could do is get some extra features. Magisk modules, exposed modules, you have XML pack, wiper FX, debloating, micro G, DNS4, Cloudflare, Greenify, lots of them. This is just the tip of the iceberg, but still nah. Like, have a look. Now customizations and features are okay, but what really is the game changer are the network apps. The Wi-Fi password apps will show you protected Wi-Fi passwords. Or this network app called Netcut, you can disconnect internet access for those naughty kids and Wi-Fi moochers, freeloaders you know. Or even this disastrous root app like Zanti, which can pretty much infiltrate any Wi-Fi network and do man in the middle attack. Scary right? And here's the real deal, custom ROMs. The real reason why you root your phone. Lineage OS, Resurrection Remix, Pixel Experience, AOSP Extended, and these are just some of them from the whole bunch. Here's a good example, Realme 3 Pro. Well, the most you could do is install Android Q Beta, but even in beta, it is much better than the cartoony color OS. And then there are several other unique apps. Like CPU-Z, which lets you overclock your phone, although don't do that. Then there is DriveDroid, which lets you boot Linux directly from Android. Here is another one, Disk Digger, which can recover deleted pictures. And my favorite, Naptime, which takes Android DOS to next level, thus saving tons of battery juice. And these are just handful of many good root apps. Let me know if you are interested in a root video app series. 
just to sum it up there are benefits of routing no doubt but will the new user using android route their phone for just a feature they won't to make you understand better this is a graph if you have been in this routing business for a while you'll know the benefit of routing phones 5 years back and while now it is just the same but the efforts to route the phone 5 years back were meager but now it is tripled or i might even say quadrupled and sadly the efforts are not worth considering for the young generation don't get me wrong people who route their android phones are still going to do it like i'm going to do it no matter what but people who are new to routing and flashing might just want to skip it and that's what the OEMs want they don't want you to root their phone which is not necessarily bad for android but bad for android enthusiasts like me and you so that's it from my end see ya